And then the hyperbaric oxygen treatment, which is, you know, what I really propose that everybody use hyperbaric oxygen. So treatment is so amazing. And it I mean, literally I've seen ulcers heal, heal in like after one visit, but that's kind of extreme. I say about three to five visits. It can really put a lot more oxygen into it. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Kim, America's holistic foot doctor. If you watched my previous video on diabetic foot ulcers, you saw that I talked about how to identify diabetic ulcers and four causes of diabetic ulcers. In this video, four medical treatments, uh, I'm going to discuss top four medical treatments that will take place if you were to see your foot doctor or to see me for ulcer treatment. Let's get right into it. When you uh, present yourself to uh, your foot doctor or to my office, uh, and when you have, a, uh, have an ulcer, and these are the tests that I will do immediately to make sure you're up to speed on what we need to be doing. Now, first, if you have any kind of opening or infection uh, that I feel you do, then I will do a intense, uh, very comprehensive blood work. Uh, we're gonna check your white count, we're gonna check your uh, all the minerals, uh, we're gonna check all your um, other hemoglobin and other things as well, and obviously your blood sugar and your hemoglobin A1C, uh, which we'll be checking extensively because we wanna know how you're doing internally. Next one is I will take an x-ray like this and to make sure what, what am I looking at when I'm, when I'm getting the x-rays? Any kind of a break line on the bone, because if you have an open ulcer, it can cause, it can start eating away at the bone and we wanna make sure that, that you're not getting uh, the bone to be broken or uh, it would, uh, infection would get into the bone. We call them osteomyelitis. Once that happens, then you're gonna lose your toe or your foot. So it's very important to make sure that that's not happening so that x-ray would be very important and multiple views to make sure nothing has been invaded into your bones. Next one is an MRI. If I'm not sure if there's other soft tissue around the bone is involved or how far, then I would get an MRI, which is really good at picking out all the soft tissue problem around the bones. Now, if there's a severe condition with a lot of bone involvement, then I would like to get a CT scan, which is very important to get the, where all the bones are to make sure that bones have not been invaded in a certain area. So I want more uh, uh, involved scan. Now, the next one is a bone scan, which I rarely use. They use it at the hospital a lot because they want to make sure that nothing is uh, is really hot, meaning you put an isotope into your vein and then it, you take a scan to see where all the hot spots are. Hot spots meaning there is an infection or some kind of reaction going on. So it's a very good way to figure out if there's an infection going on. Also, I would do a vascular concert, especially if I don't feel the pulses or if I don't feel the, uh, if, if there's too much dryness, if it's it, just the overall foot's not looking healthy, then I would order vascular studies. We have some uh, ways we do it in the office, uh, but as severe cases, I would send them off to uh, my vascular surgeon friends who will do extensive testing. If there's a blockage of arteries in the lower extremities, then they need to open it. They may have to do a bypass, angioplasty. I mean, there's many different things they can do to open the circulation because without circulation, also it's just not gonna heal. So it's a very important. Next one is nerve conduction studies or EMG. Now this is the test for the neuropathy. If, uh, if there's any kind of uh, uh, lack of sensation, it's very important to know uh, where it's coming from, if it's coming from the back or if, if there's any blockage somewhere. And we want to know, is it overall uh, just diabetes condition that's causing this? And then, then we really need to know what's going on. So I, I send the patient to a physiatrist uh, or a neurologist to make uh, sure that all the nerve endings are working well. And we need to document that as well. Once we find out uh, uh, the whole status of what's going on with the patient, and the, the status of ulceration, then the first thing I would do is to debride. Well, I'm, I'm an old school guy. I've been practicing for 30 years, so I don't, I don't use a lot of biologics or skin substitute. Uh, a lot of more advanced uh, wound care centers and a lot of people use this. Uh, I don't particularly see uh, necessary unless there's severe conditions that really difficult to vascularize the area or have the circulation go in there. And it's really advanced stage. I think that's what's needed. But most of my patients that come to me, I can debride really well. I like debriding. You've probably seen my other videos. I like cleaning up and let it really bleed. If they're really bleeding well, hallelujah. That's a really good sign because that shows me that you're gonna get oxygen and nutrient to the area to heal this really well. So I don't really need to use a lot of this, but if I need it, I'm gonna use the biologics like uh, bioengineered tissues 
or skin substitute like Apligraft, which is a, it, it works like a, a covering of the skin so that your body recognizes the skin and it seems to really help healing as well. Also, I use debriding agents like um, uh, Santil, which is an excellent one that literally clean the area out and get rid of scar tissue. Uh, a lot of times I don't need to use that. I, I see the patients every week or every other week to really clean this whole thing out, let it uh, really uh, kind of bleed out and then have the patient soak it. When you soak it in Epsom salt, it kills just about everything. It works better than any other antibiotics because salts have that property of killing everything. So that's how I really debride down into good bleeding. I see it quite often. And when I see them quite often, I keep talking about their diet and a, a lot of lifestyle changes that they need to make. So I make sure that they're under control with the diabetes and then let it bleed out all the time. And that's probably the most important thing that I do to make sure that the area is vascularized and then be able to heal really quickly. We're about halfway through my medical treatments for diabetic ulcers. If you've enjoyed this video so far or learned something new, leave the words medical in the comments below and be sure to also give this video a thumbs up. Next thing uh, we need to do after you're debriding it weekly or bi-weekly to let this area bleed out really well. And obviously if it's not bleeding out very well, then obviously you need to uh, send the patient to a, a, a vascular surgeon to vascularize the area. If there's a good bleeding, the next most important thing is to offload. A lot of people try to negotiate with me and saying, well, can I still cook? Can I still walk my dog? Can I do some walking? I said, no, <laughs> no more being on your feet. Tell your whole family that you cannot cook anymore. You cannot clean anymore. You cannot do laundry anymore. You cannot walk your dog anymore. You just cannot do it. You can sit down and do exercise. It anything standing you should not be doing because that puts a pressure on there and your cells need to regenerate. When you put pressure on there, it cannot regenerate. You need to rest it. Keep your feet up, really rest it, eat well, get on the diet, watch good stuff, right? Be happy. We're going to talk about all that, but you need to offload. Really important. Stay off work, especially I tell people you need to stay off work. If you have a lot of standing job, you're lifting and carrying and walking and doing all kinds of things, you need to stay off your work. Without that, nothing works. So very important, no more negotiating on this. You need to be offloaded. And I do as a foot doctor, we work with your shoes and your post-op shoes, put pad around this so that let's say you have an ulcer right here, then I put pad around this so that that pressure is really minimized. And some of the patients still on it too much, then I put them on a boot because that boot doesn't allow it to move so that it's not putting as much pressure. Even at that, I put extra padding around it so that it's, uh, the pressure is taken off from that area as well. If you're really non-compliant and not listening to me at all, even up to this point, then you're going to get a cast, okay? Because then you have no option. Then you, can, you have to stay off. You cannot drive. You cannot do anything. So I put people on a cast. And the next one you do is you put them on either crutches or knee walkers, really good, right? You, they, you got wheels and then you have people rolling around really well with the knee walkers. So that's really popular now. So these are the ways that I offload, stay off work, stay off doing things around the house. And then even then with all of these methods and then debriding really well, it tends to heal really quickly. Okay. Next one is increased healing. Now, not only we do things outside and cleaning it out and, and then uh, let, let, let pressure off of this area, most importantly, you have to increase the healing potential. And, and obviously, if, if there's an infection, you gotta get antibiotics. Wound vac is something, if it's draining a lot and it's too much draining, then what we use is, is a little vacuum thing. You put it on it and it sucks all the moisture out of it. it, works very well for a short period of time when it's draining a lot. And then the hyperic oxygen treatment, which is, you know, what I really propose that everybody use hyperbaric oxygen. So treatment is so amazing. And it I mean, literally, I've seen ulcers heal, heal in like after one visit, but that's kind of extreme. I say about three to five visits, it can really put a lot more oxygen into it. Uh, you know, the hyperbaric oxygen works is that you, you go into this chamber and it pressurized chamber. So it pushes all the oxygen into your cells and then into your bloodstream and then put 100% oxygen into the tank as well. So. Uh, you're getting about 10 times more oxygen than the normal atmosphere out here. So it's really effective 
to get all the oxygen, all the healing. It decreases your fatigue and gives you more energy too. On top of that, gives you all the nutrient, gives all the oxygen, push it into your uh, vascular structures, which is what you need to really heal. So I highly recommend. I do. Th I have three tanks in my office that that we use to get the people to be uh, using it at least twice a week, maybe more. If you're if you're off. I already took you off work, right? If you have big ulcers, then you need to use it maybe two, three times a week to really improve because you'll be convinced that it's going to help a lot because every week I see it's dramatic improvement, right? So it's very important to use that. Some reason I cannot handle it because it's too much infection, too involved, then I send the patients to wound care centers. And they have nurses, doctors, specialists, they all work together uh, to make the ulcers improve. So it's an excellent place uh, that I can send some patients over. I, I rarely have to do it, but there's a, it's a good option for very involved, uh, very sick patients, very infected patients uh, that really need uh, comprehensive care. And the next one is after your ulcer heals or before you develop ulcers, it's important to fix these hammer toes and bunions and prominent bones. And because of the padding, lack of padding, uh, a lot of people get ulcers if you're diabetic. So it's very important to make sure you fix your foot deformities, such as hammer toes beforehand, or after your ulcer heals, you cannot do surgery when th there's an open ulcer because you, you assume that it's, uh, it's got some kind of infection. So you cannot touch those bones. However, once the ulcer is healed, you have to take care of the hammer toes, hammer toes and bunions and other problems, the prominent bones, because without that, you can get the ulcer again. So these are the um, four ways that I treat uh, diabetic ulcers. Be sure to like this video if you found it interesting or learned something new. If you think someone else will enjoy it, be sure to send it to them. Stay tuned for my next video in my diabetic ulcer series coming out next Sunday. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels, including Instagram and Facebook, to stay updated on everything happening on my channel. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.